Hi everyone, Pray for the Win here, your self-love coach and also recovering codependent. So today I wanted to share my codependency timeline and this is inspired from learning about addiction and it made me think about my addiction to attention, my addiction of um, yeah, to be loved and liked by others, especially when it came to romantic relationships. So I'm I'm conti- I'm a re- I'm, a, I'm an active recovering codependent. I had two long-term relationships from the age of 16. And uh, I'm going to start this timeline right now. It started when I was 15 turning 16 in June of 2004. Okay? I was getting into my sophomore year. Wait, is it my sophomore? Getting into my junior year. Getting into my junior year in uh, high school. And that was my first codependency relationship. And looking back, I was I was perfectly set up for a codependent relationship because the earliest memory that I have as a child was that I was extremely shy. I barely talked. I was very like um, quiet, mute almost. That's that's the memory that I have of how I was and. I just saw it I, in elementary school. I was already looking for validation and attention, um, and I was just really confused of why certain kids would get more attention than me. And I and I just saw, okay, they look they look very similar. That the people, the kids who are getting more attention, look a certain way. So because of I I look a certain way. So anyways, I was already on the road to codependency at such a young age, being that I was already seeking for attention and for approval and to be popular and included in everything. And so, yeah, when I turned 16, I got into my first codependent relationship and it was abusive, (laughs) manipulative. Um, I lost my virginity. Um, There was control. There was jealousy. Um, I ended up even marrying marrying the person in 2007. So this relationship was uh, lasted for five years, and uh, in 2019 is when we broke up, kind of like mid mid year, and you know, I felt like I was good. Like wow, that was a journey. I finally left that relationship. I knew it was unhealthy, and I felt so powerful. I felt so good, you know. Um, and looking back, there wasn't really anything that I can recall that where I was like conscious doing active recovery um, from codependency. I just figured, oh, that's gone. Okay, like I'm free. I'm, I'm feeling so good being free and going into this next chapter being single. And, um, and I say this because when I look back, I mean, it helped during that time, but looking back, it was a lot of instant gratifying activities that I would do um, to have fun and kind of just like, like say bye to this relationship, like, like I'm just gonna put you on the shelf. Thank goodness it's over and all of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, cause I was partying, drinking, um, going to the clubs a lot. And then later on that year, I met somebody, you know? And eventually it led into a relationship where all the codependency came back full on strong. So I know that in the addiction world, there's the relapse and the lapse conversation. And uh, I'm gonna call that a relapse because I just grew to be, again, so dependent on someone else to make me feel better emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, financially. I mean, like, my sense of self, my vision of sense of self was being with someone else. Like, I, 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 it was hard for me to, again, really imagine myself alone and doing life by myself. And so even though I felt good about being single for a couple of months, just from meeting someone new, all the excitement energy just led me to going into another codependent relationship for four plus years. And so that went on until 2014 in the fall. So um, yeah, that is five years. And uh, would I do that right? <sighs> yeah, five, four years. I'll just say since like I met, I met my last one. And even though I came to a rock bottom where I knew that I needed to cut it off, right? So everyone has a bottom, they say, um, in any journey that, that, that has an like addiction component and a recovery component. I, um, I had that rock bottom and called it quits. And it was really hard. <laughs> it was 
really hard. I mean, I was not practicing any type of like self-love, you know. Uh, the only thing that I had going on that time was confidence in public speaking. Um, that was one thing, and confidence in team building. You know, there was some professional skills that I learned, but not emotional processing, healing, self-love tools, you know. So um, I relapsed. <laughs> I'm going to call it a relapse. Even though we broke up, I was still so attached and I would do anything in my power to still be in that person's presence, even to like get affection, sleep with them. You know, I just could not let go. And then I hit a di another bottom again, right? Um, where I saw myself just putting myself through. So it was no longer about like, oh, fuck you. It was almost like it was looking at me like, dang, Quinn. Like you really need to cut off communication or really distance your communication. It was a little complicated. We we're business partners. You really don't need him anymore. You got you girl. You've grown so much. And so this is when I felt true recovery happening because it took me a whole year. So 2014, we broke up. I went through 2015, still relapsing, back into his presence and back into my ways, the codependency behaviors. And then 2016 was when I declared I've had enough of this torture to myself. I am going to lean into actually being by myself, practicing self-love, being my own best friend, going to these healthy outlets when I'm really wanting to reach out back to him. And that is, that's why I talk about 2016 a lot because that's when I actually started practicing self-love and being my own best friend. And so it's never gonna be cold turkey, everybody. <laughs> so this could be helpful for someone who is recognizing that they're codependent or someone who is affected by someone who is codependent, okay? Um, so yeah. Even though I got really strong in my practicing my self-love, I mean, I'm telling you, I felt so alive and so empowered and just on a high with this new world of practicing self-love. And even then, I wanna say I, I lapsed again probably later on that year. That's the only one that I can, can recall, right? It's not gonna be perfect. Um, they say healing is like a loop, a kind of like a spiral, but as long as you continue on the journey, you will continue to go further each time. So going into 2017, there was a few lapses again. And these, this lapse really, um, what, what led me to these lapses was one, uh, this year he really wanted me back. So I have someone who... I broke it off with and then we got to this place where we were fine not you know just doing our own thing and living our own lives to I want you back <laughs> and so that's really hard for me that's codependent the person who I'm like recovering from coming back real hard wanting to work things out and um, I thought I was strong enough I thought I was mentally good emotionally good but once I was in his presence again, like in person, everything got triggered again. And then I lapsed a few times that year. And um, this was a really tricky time. It was really getting to like another bottom-ish place because, you know, the person I'm with now uh, basically was like creating a healthy boundary for him because he saw, I mean, he didn't know that I fully like lapsed. He just saw that, okay, like there's something not like good here and he was feeling unsafe. So he kind of gave me an ultimatum like mm, this thing that we got going on here. Um, I can't do this anymore with you. If you're continuing to communicate with this person that you mm, experienced so much codependency and he was just seeing unhealthy like behaviors kind of like coming up. Whew. And so there was that. So 2017 was fucking intense. <laughs> fucking intense um and that's when i finally decided like later on that year um in 2017 towards like the fall that's when i actually cut off communication until that day i have not communicated with my past partner to this very day even though there was messages cut it off Whew. so yeah and i was i've been clean from him since then <laughs> sounds like 
a drug, right? And um, so since then I've been clean from him. And uh, I mean, today, seeing how I'm able to catch my triggers, being in a relationship right now and catching when a little bit of my codependency feelings comes up, I'm able to catch it right away because I know exactly what it is. I've been through this so many times. Um, and there's just no way without the practice. There's just no way. And so it's a journey, okay? So if I say that I started my codependency, my codependency really started in 2004, and right now it's 2021. So if you're someone who's affected by um, seeing someone go through codependency, just know that they're gonna have to hit their bottom. You know, there could be some alternative ways, but based on what I've seen through others and what I've experienced with myself, the best thing that you can do for someone who is going through codependency is to continue to be a safe space and creating healthy boundaries for you so you're not affected by it and you're continuing to live your life, right? And that's why I'm finding myself being for my clients and other people where I'm continuing to be a safe space. And of course, I have some healthy boundaries, you know, making sure that they're not creating a codependency relationship with me, right? So um, healthy boundaries, practicing your self-love so you're not affected by the person who's codependent. And for the person who is recognizing that they are codependent, um, what helped me was sticking to something positive, honestly sticking to something positive, whether it's a community, whether you're listening to someone. Um, I did everything. I did everything in my power, especially when I was like saying to myself, okay, I'm really done here. It's time to really recover. Um, but yeah, I, and then I would implement these tools that I would come across people suggesting. I absorbed it like freaking glue, right? Because I was so desperate to get better and desperate to not fall back to where I was. And so um, that's my timeline. And I'm, I'm, an, I'm, I'm right now today, I'm in a very active. I'm very active in my codependency recovery. So if you or anyone know, if you need help or if you know someone who needs help and they're ready, like I'm available. I would say that is my specialty because that's something that I personally relate with. I mean, I've been through it myself and I've seen myself what I did and like how much it took. And that's why I'm always creating content and mentioning, I'm here for the whole entire process. I'm here for it all. Being surrounded with people who are safe space, who have been through it and could really understand what you're going through is so key. And so that's my story. That is my codependency timeline. If you have any questions, let me know. Other than that, um, yeah, I just wanna say you got this. Everyone has their own timing and uh, and yeah, here to support you through and through. Okay, bye. <laughs>